a yup. I'm going to show you how to understand and use the slash execute command for Minecraft. Rather than being a command on its own, slash execute is split into 12 subcommands. Some of these are a little more complicated than others, looking at you slash execute store. But I will do my best to explain what each one does and how to use them. If you came here for a specific subcommand, you can use the chapters at the bottom to skip ahead. That being said, we're going to get right into the meat of things by talking about execute if and execute in less. Slash execute if does pretty much what we'd expect from the name. It executes a command if certain conditions are met. For example, execute if entity will check if a specific entity exists in your world, or at least in the loaded chunks. So let's say I wanted to test for some cute little bunnies in my world. To do this, I would run slash execute if entity, then specify the entity I want to look for. I want to check if there are any rabbits, so I will add at e type equals rabbit. If I run the command on its own, I will get this message saying test passed. All this means is that the conditions for the command were met. But that's boring, let's do something a bit more interesting. Firstly, maybe I don't want anything to happen unless there is at least one bunny within a three block radius of me. By adding run to the command, we can then stack any command in the game to run if the test passes. So what are we going to do when we detect a buddy in our vicinity? Why? Because I hate joy. Bunny proximity minds aside, there is more you can test for than just entities. Execute if block tests the block at certain coordinates. Running the command execute if block 000, Minecraft bedrock will return a test pass because there's bedrock there. Score can check if the value of a scoreboard falls within a certain range, and data checks the NBT data of a block, entity, or container. Execute if predicate is far too complicated for this video, and I'm not qualified to explain it. I'll leave a link to Legitimus's video in the description if you want to learn about it. Last on the list is execute if blocks, and this is a fun one. Not to be confused with execute if block, blocks will compare two different regions to each other, and return a test pass if all the blocks within those regions are identical to each other. Similar to the slash clone command, this command needs three sets of coordinates. The first two indicate the opposite corners of the first region you want to compare, and the third set determines the lower northwest corner of the second region. This last bit just decides if air is counted as a block. So with this command here, I can compare these two regions with a 3 by 3 with a 3 by 3 cube. If the blocks in these two regions are different, it'll say test failed. But if they contain the same blocks, it'll say test passed and tell me how many blocks are the same. All this time we've been talking about execute if, but what about execute in less? Well thankfully it's exactly the same, except the only difference is that the test will pass if the conditions are not met. Execute run is very easy to understand. All it does is let you run a command. If I type slash execute run, you can see that I have the option to run any command in the game afterwards, including the execute command. As you may have seen in the execute if examples, it can be chained to the end of other execute subcommands to make much more complex things happen. Execute run, execute run, execute run, execute run, execute run, say hi. Hi. The next few subcommands I'm showing you all modify where or how a command is run in some way, and next up is execute as and execute at. While both of these commands do different things, it can be easy to get confused between them. Execute at allows you to alter where a command is run. By default, commands are run at the location of whoever ran it, but execute at lets you change this to any entity you want. Hey there, little guy. So let's run execute at all rabbits run set block. 10 blocks above his head. Anvil. Well, would you look at that? It died. Now what slash execute as does is runs a command as another entity. In some cases, this will do the same thing as at does. So I think the best way to show this is using the say command. If I run slash execute as at e run say e, you can see that every entity says e in the chat. Even if another entity is running the command, it can still end up happening at you or another command block's location. If this happens, most of the time an easy fix is just to add at at s before whatever command you want to run. Execute in allows you to run a command in another dimension. You can see here that we have the option to run a command in either of the three default dimensions, but any custom dimensions added with data packs or mods will appear here as options as well. If I wanted to get to the nether without building a portal, I could teleport myself there by running this command here. This can also be pretty useful if you're running a server. For some reason, a lot of Minecraft servers won't sync game rules between dimensions, so you can use this command while setting up your server so that you don't have to enter that dimension to run the command. 
execute a line is a bit of a weird one. What it does is rounds up the x, y, or z coordinate of the following command to a whole number, aligning it to that axis. So let's align myself. If I run this command here, I will snap to the x axis of this block. Adding all the axes will align me to the bottom corner of a block. Why would you ever want to do this? Well... Okay, moving on. Execute facing applies to commands that use directional coordinates. These are these things here. Normally, these run commands relative to where the player is facing, but what execute facing does is lets you change that direction to point towards an entity or coordinate instead. Let me show you an example. This teleport command here will teleport me 10 blocks forwards in relation to where I'm facing. As you can see, every time I run it, I jump forwards by 10 blocks. Where slash execute facing comes in is rather than running a command relative to where you are facing, you can run it pointing towards that pig over there. If I run an execute facing entity and target the nearest pig, I can run the same teleport command, but regardless of where I'm facing, it will always bring me closer to the pig. However, <coughs> However, the real fun begins when you do the opposite and make the entities teleport closer to you. Take a look at this command here for a second and take a guess what'll happen if I turn on this repeating command block. Run. Run! <sighs> Execute anchored anchors a command to either the eyes or feet of an entity. So take this armor stand here. If you press F3 and B, you can display the hitboxes of entities. If a command is anchored to the feet of this entity, it will run at the bottom center of its hitbox. Whereas if it's anchored to the eyes, it will run on this red box here. Th th this is red, right? But either way, it's this box here. If I run this command here, n nothing happens, because by default, the game teleports my feet to where my feet are. But if I start off with execute anchored eyes, instead the game will teleport my feet to where my eyes are. So you can see that right now, my eyes are aligned with this snow layer here. If I pause at just the right time, you can see that my feet are now where my eyes were. I can't think of any practical uses for this, but it's there if you need it. If you thought execute as and at were similar, just wait until you hear about positioned. When I was scripting this video, I got stuck on position because I couldn't figure out how it was different to execute at, and that's because they pretty much do the same thing but with some small differences. While execute lets you run a command at the location of one or multiple entities, execute position lets you run a command at set coordinates. Seems simple enough, until you find out about execute positioned as which lets you run the command at an entity instead of a coordinate. The only difference I could find is execute at also includes the rotation data of the entity, whereas execute positioned as only includes the position. Do we need two different subcommands for this? Probably not. Let's move on. This video is getting quite long, but thankfully execute rotated is pretty simple. It lets you match the rotation data of one entity to another. For example, I have this armor stand here, and we can make it turn to face the same direction we're facing by executing the command as the armor stand, and then running the rotated subcommand. We want it to copy us, so rotated as our username. These three tildes here just mean it'll stay in the same place, and these last two tildes indicate the direction it's facing. Since we've used the rotated subcommand, it'll copy our rotation instead of its own. And you can see wherever we look, it'll copy us whenever we run the command. Ah, <sighs> so it's come to this. We've tackled the conditional subcommands, the run subcommand, and all the modify subcommands, but now it's time to face the final boss of slash execute, the store command. I would be lying if I said that I completely understood how it works, so I'll just cover the very basics of it. If you want a much more in-depth look at the command, Legitimus has an entire video dedicated to it, which I'll leave in the description. Okay, so, slash execute store lets you store the outcome of a test or command to something else, such as a scoreboard, boss bar, or entity. Result means means it will store the outcome of a test or command, such as the time from slash time query or any value from slash data get. Success will store a 1 or a 0, depending on if the command runs successfully. So let's stick with something fairly easy and save the game time to a scoreboard. As you can see, I've got a sidebar here, which is displaying the scoreboard world time, which is just a dummy scoreboard I made earlier. So we're going to run execute store result, because we want the number itself, score, my username, world time, and then we write down what we want to store to this scoreboard. 
As you can see when I run that, it updates the scoreboard with the game time. If I put that exact same command in a repeating command block, I can have it update every tick. Now this barely scratches the surface of what is possible with the store command, so once again, if you're interested in learning more, check the video in the description. I do hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please leave a like so that YouTube knows to show this to more people. If you have any questions, I'll try my best to help you out in the comments with any problems you may have. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing, you know, YouTube statistics and all that. If you want to learn more about how to do more complicated things with commands, check out my tutorial on the slash function command. Anyways, adios.